Society, who is one of the organizations organizing this. Uh, the other one is the CSD, uh, housed in, in this house, this building. Uh, we are currently having a steering committee meeting in something called the US Water, uh, which is an EU campus project on master courses in uh, sustainable development and uh, water resources. Uh, two of our members, uh, Professor uh, Avror Gadaev and Professor Rustam Ishniasov, is that? Yes. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Uh, are the ones who are going to make the presentation and uh, you will enjoy them and please um, I, I hope that you might have some questions afterwards because there will be a little time for questions as well but I start by giving uh, Abrur the floor okay thank you thank you okay good afternoon again so as a uh, Daniela uh, mentioned, um, our team, Uz Water project team, came from Uzbekistan, and the presentation is um, about about maybe the main environmental issue in our region. And you see, the name is uh, the Ar about Aral Sea and its history, its issues, and uh, how we manage by now with this uh, kind of um, regional environmental catastrophe in, in our uh, Uzbekistan and including other neighboring countries, Central Asia. Um, before starting, of course, we say why we came here and why we are we here. And uh, quickly, Gunella mentioned about our uh, Uz Water project, and this is an um, EU funded campus project which started from 2012. And uh, the project's um, name is uh, Master Program Development in Uzbekistan with the main focus on the water resources management, but including environmental issues and sustainable development. So, and this project, um, as I mentioned, started from 2012. And you see the registered number, and it says, um, uh, including uh, European uh, universities and eight um, Uzbek higher educational institutions. And uh, the first I want to show you who are our partners from uh, European Union side? And this is um, University of Latvia, KTH, and the Kaunas Technology University, and um, um, Warsaw Life Science University, University of Uppsala, who is hosting, and we're grateful to this university for this meeting, this opportunity and the Swedish RLC Society. And um, partners from uh, Uzbekistan side, eight higher educational universities, and you see um, different universities from different parts of Uzbekistan. Uh, because of the issue of RLC, and we started from uh, capital city Tashkent, and you see two Tashkent universities, one is a uh, Tashkent uh, Technical University, and another one is um, Uzbek National University, two of them Tashkent, and then three Samarkand universities. Different universities with a different focus on this project. And then Bukhara State University, um, Organ State University, and Karakal Park State University. 
The Karakalpak State University is located um, exactly on the Aral Sea zone. We call this zone like um, Aral Sea environmental um, or ecological disaster zone. It sounds not so good, but this is true. So you see some uh, pictures about um, how it looks like now um, around Aral Sea and Aral Sea zone, and you see um, lands in the Nukus area. And of course, you are thinking this is a, a little snowy, but it's not. It's salty. It's salted land. Uh, this is a part of uh, ecological catastrophe in the, in the land of Aral Sea zone. So our partners from whom I mentioned about, they came to our region, they came to our universities and give um, uh, teachings and seminars uh, about um, um, how to fix this problem. Later I will tell you uh, why this pro um, project uh, is very urgent and effective in our uh, region and uh, how we are um, cooperating with our colleagues from, from the uh, European side. And another picture shows how it is um, degraded. I mean, the land degradation and uh, climate change. And um, of course, uh, all of them, the results or consequences of the Aral Sea catastrophe. This is a huge environmental problem in our uh, region. And we decided with our colleagues, we decided to fix this problem with the um, specialist training. Because, and you saw the, the name of the project is to develop new master's program. It means we are trying to, um, to train new generation for the uh, mitigation of this catastrophe in the uh, Aral Sea zone. We will have intensive contacts with our uh, partners and, and other uh, universities and also um, uh, this is a good opportunity to invite professors or um, colleagues to, to our center um, to give lectures and also um, to train uh, our master students. Okay, before starting about RLC issue, I really want to give you uh, maybe for your information uh, about our uh, region and about um, Uzbekistan, of course. Many of you have visited and you know, and maybe not all of you, but um, Uzbekistan is one of five Central Asian countries. So Uzbekistan is uh, um, one of the, the largest cotton producer country in the world. And you see the information, this is the largest sixth country in the world. I put the statistics because of the cotton production, RLC catastrophe, RLC disaster started. Two things are related to each other. You know, the one is a good income, another one is a, the worst result with the environment. So, and it was, of course, uh, during uh, Soviet time. It was started in the 1960s, but about it, we'll talk later. And um, just about Uzbek industries nowadays, we have uh, automobile industry, of course, gold industry is the one of the main in, in Uzbekistan. You say cotton and the silk. The last one is the silk because our country, our region is famous in the world with these products and with this kind of industries. So we, we are. You see the map, world map, and uh, Central Asia is uh, shown and the, the Uzbekistan is in the center, in the center of Central Asia. And that's why we call this uh, country double landlocked country. Of course, you know, who are landlocked countries? Landlocked countries, they don't have uh, an access to the uh, water, to the sea, to the ocean. So Uzbekistan is surrounded by landlocked countries. 
So water is the, the huge issue in, in Central Asia, but it's double in Uzbekistan. The map of Uzbekistan, and you see uh, we are neighboring with uh, Kazakhstan from the north side, and from the east, uh, Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan. From the south, we are um, dealing with a very small, but still with Afghanistan. And from the uh, west, we have a neighbor country like Turkmenistan. And you see two uh, big rivers, Sirdaria and Amudaria, and they are the main um, surface water source for Central Asia and also for Aral Sea. And you see Aral Sea on the northwest in, in the uh, Uzbekistan's land, and you see half of the sea located in Uzbekistan and another half on Kazakhstan territory. So this is the, the end point for the water, um, Sardaria and Amudaria basins. So now I would like to divide these countries into two groups, upstream countries and downstream countries. And you see Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan, they are downstream countries. So they are dealing with a huge environmental issue with the water uh, sources like Sardaria and Amudaria, but it starts from Kyrgyzstan and uh, the partly uh, we have by the, this basin with uh, China and uh, from um, southern side uh, with a small uh, tributaries to Amudaria with uh, Afghanistan and Iran. General information about Uzbekistan: We have, uh, we are the one, uh, the largest by population in Central Asia. This is number one. I mean the largest, and area is uh, 4,047, um, 447,000 square kilometers, and you see. The mainly we are Uzbeks, like 80% and other nations we have. And we got independence in 1991 from, and you remember, from USSR. And the capital city is um, Tashkent. Tashkent is the one uh, of the largest cities in Central Asia. And our president is Islam Karimov. And we are mainly Muslims. The state, the country is divided by Vilayats, like uh, regions, and uh, you see three different locations, like desert places, mainly Kazilkum, and partly we are we have a Karakum, and nowadays the new terminology came because of Aral Sea, and the land. Later you will know the Aral Sea was huge territory, and now it is shrank, and now we have a huge salted land and we call it Aralkum. This is a new terminology. It came up with the, with the Aral Sea disaster. And, uh, and of course we have mountains and, uh, and other uh, fertile valleys. We, we do mainly cotton. Climate is uh, uh, really hot and dry because of uh, water sources and um, uh, you see uh, summer temperatures and winter, mainly we have only one month winter, still we are having the, the, uh, the autumn. I mean autumn will end by the December maybe 15th, December 20th and winter starts from there and only January is the mainly winter month and, and then it starts um, spring again and we have very small um, rainfall because of the climate and location. Some pictures show um, about Uzbek culture. People who have been in that region, uh, the culture, history is uh, one of the important parts of the nation. And uh, Uzbek culture, one of uh, uh, colorful cultures in, uh, in Central Asia and you see uh, Uzbek Bazaar and you know the dancers and how uh, we are happy with the with Uzbek cuisine, food, 
this is a very important part of culture. And uh, myself, uh, as I mentioned, I'm from Samarkand city, which is uh, uh, one of all the cities in the world, and it's almost 3,000 years old, like Rome. And uh, uh, we have uh, one of the oldest universities in, in Central Asia. Of course, it doesn't act now, but uh, uh, if you are familiar with the word, uh, word uh, madrasa, madrasa means university, and uh, you see on this picture, three universities, and we call this place like Rajasthan, and uh, three universities from the century 14th and 15th. So they are now as a museum, open museum, but one of the um, main um, cultural and historical heritage in uh, Uzbekistan. And my university is uh, architectural and civil engineering, and we have water supply and water resources management department. We will do the Uz water project, and uh, um, and of course this is a merge with the art engineering and technical construction and uh, I teach at that university water resources and water supply and you see some uh, classes art classes and I move to to the water and water issues in, uh, in Uzbekistan so you see water consumption and water consumption mainly if you see goes to the to the rural to the agriculture almost 90 percent goes to to the um, agriculture and it means it is related with the with the cotton production and other agricultural business in uh, in uzbekistan and you see industry only 12 percent and the municipality takes three percent of water this is water consumption and what what is uh, water sources in, uh, in Uzbekistan? You see Amudarya and Sirdarya, so uh, in total they give uh, uh, 50, around 54, 55% water, and other water comes from the groundwater. Please just remember, 45% uh, uh, sources are from underground, and I will come back about this later during my presentation, and um, as I mentioned, the main rivers are Sardaria and Amudaria. And uh, you see the neighboring countries with whom we are dealing with this, uh, or we're sharing this basins, the resources, and um, as I mentioned, Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan, they are upstream countries, and Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, and Kazakhstan, they are downstream countries. Almost all of them are um, mainly, they do agriculture, so rural economy is uh, one of the dominating uh, businesses in Central Asia. What it means? It means you saw rainfall, and I mentioned about land locking, and I mentioned about cotton production and other agricultural production and climate. Because of dry climate, we have to irrigate everything and all time. No irrigation, no production. Irrigation from the rivers, and nowadays we have another huge transboundary issue, water resources issue in Central Asia, between Central Asian countries. So, also, this is um, one of the reasons why we have RLC disaster. And of course, climate is changing everywhere, but because of shrinking of RLC and uh, the dryness of the land, we have double climate changing. Very dry and windy, Land, and you saw the land is very salted. So it was arable before, before I can say 1980s. But now, uh, later you will see how the um, 
see is straight. It's gone and the, on the lanes where well, now we have salted, windy, dry uh, desert. And this is why you see uh, some statistics about changing of climate and uh, having some kind of um, um, extra environmental issues in that region. Now we don't say Aral Sea is um, only Aral Sea zone catastrophe because um, recently, no, October 1929, it was a huge environmental and um, international environmental conference in Orange City about Aral Sea disaster. It was officially mentioned the salt from this land, um, you know, scientists, they found on the North um, Arctic Sea. It means the land is getting more salted and degraded and um, um, not only climate and also um, demography is changing. And about it later. Maybe my colleague uh, tell more about it. And um, climate change in, um, mostly uh, impacted on the north side. And you saw on the map we is Oral, Oral Sea and uh, how um, three republics, three countries are dealing with that uh, issue and. Um, And that issue, of course, uh, because of water and because of shrinking oral sea, and and you see um, <clears throat> the rural areas, villages, they have huge uh, water problems. Um, I mean, um, Bukhara in Navai cities, both of them, they are um, regional capital cities. And Bukhara is one of the oldest historical also. And they have um, a huge drinking water problem. And that's why now we have uh, two pipelines. And one meter and 100 and 140 centimeters diameter. Two lines. And we sent from Samarkand to these two cities, to Bukhara and to Navai, and the distance between them, between Samarkand and Bukhara, almost 300 kilometers. So drinking water comes from Samarkand side to these regions. We, you see we have uh, the big water, drinking water problems. And um, communities, nowadays they use uh, groundwater for drinking and for some places for industry. Uh, mainly for agriculture, they use 100% groundwater because of um, oral problem. And you see cotton plantations. I mean, from one side we have very small resources, but from another side you saw 85% for rural um, economy, and we use uh, the, the water for irrigation, mainly cotton and wheat and other plantations. And the water gets more polluted. More water is polluted water goes through the plantations to the um, drainage system. And this impact, you know, uh, also another problem with the with the industrial and the economy pollution of surface waters and through surface waters it gets to into the, the ground water so this is another issue in our region and you see because of this industries year by year you know the land is getting more uh, salted and you see inflow to to the Aral Sea was originally by 1960s it was um, around 50 cubic kilometers per year. But now, 
The stati last statistics here are uh, by 2002, and it is less than one cubic kilometer per year. And if we just divide, you know, the water flow gets low 50 and more times less than the, the original time. So I think uh, now you have some ideas about RLC and uh, water issues and environmental issues in that region. Now I really would like to give a stage to my colleague, uh, Rustam Ishni Yazov, who is from, originally from that region, from Karakalpa State University, and, uh, and he tells us about, uh, about reasons and statistics and how the, the problem looks like nowadays. RLC, uh, once the uh, uh, fourth largest inland sea in the world, uh, which is situated between uh, Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan. And by establishing program to promote agriculture, especially that of cotton, Soviet government led by uh, Khrushchev, uh, in, in the end of 50s, in the beginning of 60s, deliberately deprived the RLC of its two main sources of water income, which almost immediately led to the less water arriving to the RLC. So, in the maybe clear in the mid of uh, 50s, for example, the big channel, Turkmen channel was uh, deep up and diverted to uh, fill the, uh, actually this is a kaku, to water the cotton, to grow cotton in Turkmenistan, for example, uh, divert uh, the deep up, uh, big Turkmen channel in the end of 50s, for example. Not only was all this water being diverted into canals and the expense of the RLC supply, but the majority of it was being soaked up by desert. And uh, between 25 or 75 or 50, depending on the time period. Uh, water level in RLC started drastically because of this decreasing. Uh, from 60s. In normal conditions, the RLC gets approximately one-fifth of its water supply through rainfall, while the rest of it comes from Amudaria and Sirdaria, the two biggest uh, uh, rivers. Evaporation is caused by water level to decrease by the same amount that flows into the sea, making it sustainable as long as inflow is equal to evaporation average. Therefore, the diversion of rivers is at the origin of the imbalance that caused the sea to slowly desiccate over the last five decades, 50 years. By the end of the 80s, the, the two great rivers, Amudaria and Sridaria, dried up before they reached the RLC. By the 89, the RLC had receded to from two separate parts, the Great Sea, uh, in the south and the Leicester Sea, small RL, in the north, uh, each of which had a salinity almost triple that of the sea in the 50s or 60s. By 92, total area of the two parts of the RL Sea had been reduced to approximately uh, 34 square kilometers, and the mean surface level dropped by 50 meters. Level of salinity rose from approximately 10 gram to liter to 100 gram to liter. And now it's 100 in source part, it's 140 gram to liter. Uh, governments of the states surrounding the RLC, it's uh, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, uh, Tajikistan and Kyrgyzstan in 1994, for example, they uh, established joint committee 
to coordinate efforts to save the RLC. But by the end of the century, the RLC receded into three separate lakes. The Greater Sea had divided into a long, uh, narrow western lake and larger, broader eastern lake, with the remains of the lesser sea to the north. The level of the sea had dropped to 36 meters above the sea level, and the water volume was reduced by three-fourths of, of that it had been in 1960. In the early 21st century, the eastern portion of the Aral suffered the most drastic and immediate decline. Uh, also, the World Bank funded the construction of a duke uh, that was anticipated to preserve the northern portion of the sea. It was expected that the entire of the remaining southern portion, both eastern and western blabbers, would be lost by 20. So, you see the pictures of, from satellite how it was decreased. It was, from 77, 19, uh, 89, and 2006. Also, the comparison between 1989 to uh, contemporary picture, how it was uh, dried up, all this picture. So, it's here is the <laughs> persimmons, forgive us. Just so commercial fishing, for example, fell from 44 almost tons in 60 to zero. No fish anymore by 1980. So Aral Sea, uh, Aral which was uh, mentioned by my colleague Abro, uh, uh, desertification process began. You see the ships, well, it used to be a place of uh, Aral Sea. Uh, the salinity level, you see. Also, this is also not snow, uh, it's just uh, salt. Dust plums, also, we, uh, from it, uh, that dust plums, uh, flies almost 500, even in Ar Arctic. Arctic, uh, it was found the uh, salt from. Uh, uh, just enjoy pictures. Disappearing types of animals. Uh, so, so, northeastern winds now pick up the sand, salt, and dust creating strong dust storms. The storms are often between 150 and 300 kilometers wide. The dust was distributed in areas far beyond the region. Uh, in the period from 1960 to 2000, the average monthly air temperature has increased by two to six uh, degrees in average in summer above. And around the sea. Correspondingly, the air temperature has also decreased during the winter. The magnitude of the change was greatly southwest of the Aral Sea, where the north mm, easterly winds blow, as those winds got stronger. Quickly, because of the time limit, we want to talk to you about um, uh, actions, what we are doing nowadays to to change the situation in the in the area and this is about uh, countries with whom we are uh, dealing this um, environmental issue and you say Kazakhstan is the, the biggest by population in Central Asia, but uh, Uzbekistan, uh, Kazakhstan by the land and Uzbekistan by the population. And uh, we're having a, um, uh, the maybe the last two, three years, more bigger uh, political 
I can say, water political, political issue with Tajikistan and Kyrgyzstan and that uh, region um, because, uh, because of um, energy problem, agriculture, water, and environment. This is a very complicated issue. And uh, what we are doing, I mean, uh, uh, you saw these pictures, and the last picture shows the RLC is almost done. And the big question, is it possible to return to that region, you know, the normal life, or to improve the social situation? This is a big issue because um, almost 40 million people, they live exactly on that environmental uh, disaster zone. 40 million, some of them from Kazakhstan, Turkmenistan, and mainly Uzbekistan. So this is a um, um, huge issue. And uh, con uh, all countries, all Central Asian countries, they are trying uh, to improve the situation by, um, by uh, more modern water using technologies. <coughs> and the main is um, drip irrigation and как мы скажем оборотные водоснабжения? Кто-то поможет мне? Оборотные водоснабжения, Линус? Could you help me? Circulated. Circulated water supply system in industries. Some industries, they use, sometimes they use uh, the huge water and the polluted water goes into the area. So, and the surface, surface water is getting more polluted. So this is uh, another option. And you see also we have some health issues. Which one is uh, because of pollution, because of climate change and, uh, and dryness. So, 12 wilayas I mentioned, and uh, this is a health care system, and it was starting from the Ministry of Public Health and uh, through the regional uh, governmental um, um, proven provincial department, how can we, ask, we, you know, do we control the situation? And how we do, how we work internationally. And my colleague Rustan mentioned about um, uh, five Central Asian countries, they established RLC Safe Foundation. And this foundation works nowadays and it works uh, really good, but you see uh, funding. So one person donation from each country comes to the foundation this is a small budget, but still we are grateful to the World Bank and the Global Watership, uh, Water Partnership Organization. Later I will show you about uh, this uh, actions of this um, organization in the Central Asia. And, uh, and we are trying to use more... Um, Modify it more uh, water safe or environmental safe technologies and irrigation in agriculture, in industry, and also in the drinking water supply system. And you see this um, graph shows by um, 2025 and 2030s the uh, water demand. For example, this is an example in uh, Samarkand city. You see, 2006 it was. 300 liters per person per day. And now it gets down, and we're expecting by 2030, it uh, gets uh, 215 liters per day per person. And how it works? It works by using the new technologies and the more um, environmentally safe industrial water supply technologies in, uh, in the area, not only in Uzbekistan, and also in other uh, Central Asian countries. So, um, and you are informed about uh, groundwater um, 
sources in, in Uzbekistan it was almost half. And the groundwaters are not recommended, for example, for um, uh, agriculture, but it is really good source for fixing this problem in the, in the area. If we could use the groundwater, for, for example, for municipality, for industry and agriculture, then we'll take less water from the Amudaria and Sardaria. So this is a one point, how to help with the RLC issue in Central Asia. But another problem is water daily, daily with the uh, neighboring countries. And I mentioned about transboundary. Okay, the upstream countries, they don't care about RLC because they are far away from them. And also they have very fresh, clean water and enough by quality and by quantity. But downstream countries, they have huge problem and they are dealing with the uh, um, health issues, climate change and, uh, and other industrial issues in the, in the region. So what we are doing and how we could change uh, the situation in the future. So number one is of course using more uh, efficient irrigation because of 85% you have seen it goes to, to the rural economy. If we could change just little changes, changings in the rural economy, it makes bigger change, big or huge changes in the situation. So this is number one. And number two is of course to improve the irrigation canals in, in whole Central Asian countries. And uh, number three is reusing um, or circulated water supply system I mentioned. And number four, installing desalinization plants in, uh, in the RLC disaster zones. I mentioned about Bukhara and Nawai, they have enough groundwater, but the quality is, doesn't meet any, any drinking water standards. So this is why uh, installation of desalinization plants are one of options. How to change the situation or how to help to the RLC disaster zone. And of course in the future, but we have tried redirecting rivers from Russian side. It was started in 1975 and it was um, stopped by 1982. It stopped because of, um, because of negotiations between, between states. By that time, you know, the Uzbekistan and Central Asia was uh, one country, but still it was a, two different parts of the one uh, huge USSR. But the Russian scientists, they predict, they say, if we redirect Og and uh, other rivers into RLC, then they could have another environmental issue. And this is true. But after 1991, now we have 15 different countries, different rules, different regulations, and that's why now we have huge transboundary issues, not only with the Russia, but also with the other Central Asian countries, neighboring countries. So, but you see some approximate calculations, how much, for example, funding needs to, to improve the situation. But it, this is um, not too much real, but still it's possible to have water from other sources to the Aral Sea and from Caspian Sea or from Russian rivers. Other statistics and current actions, just I wanted to mention about the recent, you know, the October 29 in Urgench, it was a huge international conference about adopting, you know, the region into the um, RLC environmental catastrophe. And now all scientists and uh, experts, they think um, we couldn't return C in the initial condition. But the only thing we could just mitigate it. I mean, the, the consequences to the, um, uh, to the situation, which one we have now, and also um, with the 
other countries, not only neighboring countries, with the uh, uh, European countries and other countries, we are trying to inform and to work on that huge issue in, in uh, Central Asia. So mainly, um, and also you, um, I mentioned about um, GWP, uh, Kasena, and you see um, this is a global water partnership. And Kasena is Central Asia in Caucasus um, cooperation on the Aral Sea issues or on the environmental issues in Central Asia in Caucasus area. So this, through this organization, Global Water Partnership is helping very much to, uh, to improve the situation. And I think we'll have, uh, I'm over limit time, but uh, this is the, the end of my presentation. Of course, we have a lot of materials, but I would be happy to, to have any, any questions if you have. And uh, this is the end of uh, presentation. Thank you very much, Abra. You're welcome. And thank you, Rustam.